Okay, so as promised, here's a short video just to show you how I went about editing the photos that I took of Danny Bartlett recently, where we ended up with quite a desaturated and, dare I say it, quite edgy look to the photographs. Looking at the screen now, we're on the left-hand side you can see the picture as it was straight out of camera, and on the right-hand side you'll see the final result. So what I want to do is just quickly show you the few processes that we have to do to end up with that. So if we go straight into Photoshop, here in front of us we've got the picture as it was straight out of camera. But before I show you how we create the colour and the edginess, I just want to do a little bit of retouching on the photograph. Um, just the area that I want to work on is this little bit on Danny's waistline here. I just want to move the small part of his waist here just away from his forearm. It's maybe me, maybe it doesn't need doing, it's just me being picky. So to do that, all we've got to do, first of all, is as always, is duplicate the layer that we're working on because we want to keep that nice and safe in case we make any mistakes. So we can do that a number of ways. One of them is by pressing Command or Control J on our keyboard, and the other way is by literally just clicking and dragging the background layer over the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel and then letting go. And you'll see it now says background copy. So now I know that the background or the original photograph is safe, we can now do whatever we want. So it's the waistline area that I want to work on the photograph. Now one way that I always do when I'm uh, going to work in the liquify tool, which is what we're going to use now, is I'll make a selection of the area that we're going to be work on, working on. And to do that, I come over to the tools bar and I select the rectangular marquee tool here, which is the second one down in your toolbar. And then all I'll do is just drag out a very rough selection of the area that I want to work on. I'll then go to the top of the screen where we have our filter menu. And about a third of the way down, you see where it says liquify. And that's the tool, the um, dialog box that we want to be in now. So what you'll notice is it's only brought in the parts of the picture we're going to be working on. Now, liquify works if I bring the whole picture in. Um, all that happens is obviously you're bringing in all the picture, all the megapixels, all the detail, and what that can do is that can really slow down the liquify tool itself. I found that if you make a selection of the, the area that you want to work on, it tends to work a hell of a lot quicker. So we're going to move this part of the waist of Danny just away from his forearm a little bit. To do that, what I want to do first of all is protect the forearm, because if I'm dragging the waistline over, there's every chance I might actually affect the forearm as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze this part of the picture. And as luck would have it, on the left hand side of the screen where we have the tools that are available to us in the Liquify uh, dialog box, the fourth one up is in fact called the Freeze Mask Tool. And we can click on that or press F on our keyboard as a shortcut to get to it. And all that allows me to do then is just to paint with this red overlay over the part of the photograph that I want to protect. So now when I adjust or I manipulate the waistline of Danny here, it won't affect the forearm. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come over to the toolbar and the very, very top uh, option available to me is the forward warp tool. So I'm going to click on that or I could press W on the keyboard as a shortcut. And all I shall do is just make small movements just dragging in this part of Danny's waist. So it just brings it away from the forearm. And you'll notice as I do that, the forearm itself, which is covered by that little red overlay, is remaining intact. It's not being pulled across and distorted. Okay, we'll click OK, and if I just show you now the before and after, if you look at Danny's waistline, we can see there that it just it's a subtle difference, but I just think it needed to be doing, needed to be done, but maybe that's just me being picky. Okay, so we'll flatten that and we'll now move on just to show you how I how I created that colouring and the edgy look to the picture. So the first thing we need to do, as always, is duplicate the layer we're working on. Come over to the Layers panel, and like I said before, it's Command or Control J, or just click on the background layer and drag it into the new layer icon so we get where it says Background Copy. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the top of the screen, and I'm going to choose Image, Adjustments, and then Desaturate. And what that's going to do is remove all the colour from the photograph here, so it looks like a pretty flat black and white picture. I'm then going to come over back over to the Layers panel, making sure that the background copy layer, the one that we've just removed all the colour from, is active, and we can tell that because it's blue. I'm then going to come to where it says Normal, and we've got these two little arrows, these are the uh, blend modes, and I'm going to change the blend mode of that layer to Soft Light. And what you'll see that's done, if I just drag the picture over, it's created a very saturated, very contrasty look to the picture. And I can see the difference if I just turn that layer on and off, you can see that. And that's maybe just a little bit too strong. So what I'm going to do is come to where it says Opacity and just drag that down a little bit to reduce how much of that contrast and saturation is visible. And I'm going to probably come down to around about 70% uh, will do. 
Okay, what I'm going to do then, I'm then going to flatten that layer, and I do that by the little grey arrow here. This brings up this little dialog box, and at the bottom here it says flatten image. And then, as always, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then duplicate that layer by dragging it to the new layer icon or pressing Command or Control J. What I want to do next is just remove all the colour from this layer. So again, I'm going to come up to the top of the uh, toolbar, Image, Adjustments, and then choose Desaturate. And then back over to the Layers panel. Just bring the picture across. Back over to the Layers panel. And all I shall do then is just reduce how much of that black and white is visible and how much of the colour is showing through from the layer beneath. So, so if I take it to zero, we can see no effect of having that black and white. To 100, it's completely black and white. But if I bring it down to around about yeah, 60%, we can see that the picture now is quite desaturated. But there is still a bit of colour, bit of colour showing through. And you can see when I turn this layer on and off, that we've just created quite a nice, subtle, desaturated picture. The final part of this process, and again, I'm just going to flatten this layer here so we get just one background layer and then duplicate it again. We're going to do something called the high pass filter. So we find that at the top of the screen, again in the filter menu, come but virtually all the way down to where it says other, and that's got a little sub menu, and one of them is called high pass. And that brings up this little dialog box here. And what you'll see that does is it puts like a grey covering over the picture. Now we have a radius. I've got this one by default set at 6. And that's exactly what I want it to be because I've obviously been doing this picture beforehand. And 6 will show you that there's just enough detail of the picture showing through. If we go too high, then it's going to be too much. If we go way down, we can't see anything. But 6, we just want to get it set so that we can just see some of the detail showing through from the picture beneath and we're going to click OK. Once we've done that, all we're going to do then again is come over to the Layers panel, and on the Blend mode, the Blend mode of this, this sort of layer that's had the high pass uh, effect added to it, we're going to change that to Hard Light. So, here we can see the before and after, and we can see that there's a lot more detail, it's added a lot more edginess to the, the picture, maybe at 100%, that's a little bit too strong. So we're going to come to the opacity of that layer, where it's 100% and just bring it down to around about, again, 60% is probably about right. And we can turn that on and off to see, yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, so that is basically it. Now, if I show you the before and after, because at the moment as you're working through it, you can't really tell what you've done. So if we do a before and after, we'll just take a quick snapshot with our history. So this is how it was when we first started off. This is the picture straight out of camera. And this is the end result. So we've got before, and after, before and after. And that is basically it.